Welcome to Finch Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. My name is Kevin DeBrida and behind me here I have the GMC Sierra AT4. These trucks have been pretty hard to come by these days and so even though this one is sold I thought I'd take the opportunity to go through the ins and outs of the vehicle so you can learn a little more about it. Whether you're thinking of making the Sierra your next truck or maybe you already own one and want to learn a little bit more. I'm going to start with the remote here. Uh, we've got our uh, lock and unlock buttons across the top. On the bottom is our remote start button and then we have our power tailgate release. To use the remote start, a lot of people have this button on their vehicle and don't know how to use it. You want to hit the lock button. Even though the truck's already locked, hold the start button for three seconds. You'll see the lights flash and the truck will start. When you get in the vehicle, you want to put your foot on the brake, push the start button on the truck, and then you'll be ready to drive. Let's take a look uh, down the side. We've got uh, our nice floodlights here on both the driver and passenger side. Those are going to be activated by the internal compartment when you are parked. So if you want to get a little more light around the truck if you're doing some work off-site a great great feature to have this one is our 5.3 liter v8 nice at4 badges down there on the doors if you're familiar with uh, gms you'll know this is our keyless access system this is what allows you to lock and unlock the doors as long as you've got the key within a meter so push once to uh, lock once to unlock if you double click it'll do all the doors in the truck at the same time in the back here, you'll notice you've got uh, your moldings around the wheel wells and tires. And those are your fender liners. Keeps it looking a little nicer on the uh, a wheel well of the truck. Also a lot quieter when you've got those stones kicking up in the wheelhouse liners. Corner steps, nothing new for GM. We've had that for quite some time. Makes it a lot easier to get into the back of the vehicle. And we've also got our rear parking sensors along the bottom here probably the coolest feature of this truck right here is our multi pro tailgate that's good it's going to allow you to get in and out of the truck bed a lot easier nice little step this one's got the spray liner on it handle at4 logo and this is our rev tri-fold cover so a nice hard cover very easy to fold up. It'll even store between the back, uh, up against the back window. Close up section one here. So if you need a little bit of a workspace or you just need to make your bed a little bit longer, you can also leave the multi-pro tailgate in this position here. We'll close that up. And just be cautious when you're closing. Make sure that you're not gonna damage either the tailgate or that tonneau cover. Moving over to the fuel tank, this is the gas version, so we just have the uh, capless gas tank right here. This is where the def would go if you had a diesel version. Get a nice look at the front. So you can always tell the AT4 by those nice bright red tow hooks down in the front. This one, in addition to the uh, rear parking sensors, also has the front parking sensors. When we take a look inside, we'll be able to show you uh, a little bit about how those work and the way it notifies you and uh, just a few things to help you feel a little bit more comfortable with the truck and how things operate. On the inside of the driver door here, we got our locks up top, memory seats in the middle there, and of course your power mirrors, power windows, all to be expected. This one has the Bose sound system and those nice AT4 um, floor liners with the uh, chrome logo. There's your full power seat adjustments. So we've got the main seat cushion, so that's going to go up and down, forwards and backwards, and then you can tilt it as well. Then we have a recline and our lumbar support. Let's hop inside. Before I start talking about the inside, I just want to touch base on the outside. Very difficult to see. There you go at the top corner of the mirror. That is your lane change alert. Those are going to illuminate when someone is in your blind spot or rapidly approaching your blind spot, letting you know it's not a good idea to change lanes. We're going to start the truck up, foot on the brake, push the start button. You won't hear it running because 
it was already running when we used our remote start. Key in my pocket is the key for driver number one. With your memory seating package, you can choose if you want the seat and mirrors to automatically move into position. That will be part of the uh, profile setup that we'll do in the radio later. But I'm gonna kind of start from this side and work my way right across the truck. We've already talked about the door panel and the controls that we have here. Um, nice feature, power folding mirrors. If you're a little tight spot in the garage, you can open and close them from there. On the bottom here, we have our automatic light control. So this is gonna be your headlamps. And most of the time you're gonna leave it in the auto position, but if you did need to turn them on manually, you can do that. And actually we're in a pretty good position here. I'm not sure if you'll pick it up in the video, but that's in the auto position. Then we've got our marker lights, those nice LED lights in the corners, and then our full headlamps. Move it back into the auto position. And now I'm pushing, you can see in the mirrors, those little lights flashing. Those are your floodlights. So we've got uh, passenger on, driver on, both on, all off. So, and that's using this button right here. Moving up from there, we've got the intensity of our dash, our driver information center, and our radio controls, our fog lamps, bed lights, and our four wheel drive system. So two wheel high is what you'll drive on in most days, but if you want a little added security, you can move into your all wheel drive mode. Then we have uh, four high and four low. This is new uh, over the last couple of years, if you're not familiar uh, with our newer trucks. So we now have our normal mode, sport mode, and off road mode. We can also click it to the left. And at the bottom there, you'll see the trailer tow haul mode engage. So that used to be on the end of the turnstock here. They've now moved it over to this switch. So we'll turn tow haul mode off. We're still leaving it in two wheel drive. Looking back at the steering wheel, we've got our cruise control right here. Um, so we've got on and off. You'll notice the uh, light flashing in the dash. That means cruise is active and we can now roll this down to set it or roll it up to resume if we had a preset speed. Cancel button over here on the side and of course down here in the corner if you're in Canada. Uh, one of the greatest features to have is a heated steering wheel. I had that in my last vehicle and thoroughly enjoyed it. I wished my current vehicle still had it. Hopefully when it comes to winter time, I will have one that has a heated steering wheel. On the other side, we've got our voice control commands for our pass through if you're using the voice recognition software in your phone. Um, most phones, so iPhones will have uh, Siri and Android phones will have uh, Google Voice or another voice recognition software. By pushing and holding this with a connected Bluetooth phone, you can activate that software. Send and receive text messages, put uh, appointments in your planner, make phone calls, all of that using Siri pass-through or Google Voice. Our controllers here, it's a five-way controller. So we've got one, two, and then you can roll it down and roll it up for three, four, and then push it in for select or button number five. That's gonna control everything we see on our driver information center. Right now we are on our home page. You can see that there right at the top. We've got our speed, speed limit. If we were on the road, that's that white box. And then we can do 350 kilometers based on how this vehicle has been driven. Brand new vehicle, so not very accurate. I'm very confident we'll be able to go more than 351 kilometers on this tank of fuel. Moving over to our information menu, we've got our average fuel economy, distance traveled, fuel range, oil life, tire pressures, air filter, and brake life. So the air filter, uh, there's an algorithm in there that uh, lets you know when it's most likely time to check or change your air filter. And with the brake pad life, there's one sensor in the front, one sensor in the back. It uses an algorithm to figure out how quickly you're gonna run through your brakes. And then once that sensor gets struck, that's right at the 50% mark, it'll recalibrate. So it gives you a great idea where you're sitting at with your brake wear and if it's something that you're gonna to have to check or upgrade in the near future. Fuel economy numbers uh, right now, because we don't have the mileage on this vehicle, it's not giving our, our best numbers, but you can track, um, there we go, distance, 50 kilometers, 150 kilometers, or 650. So it'll track, in the case of 650, your last 650 kilometers, as well as your best 650 kilometers. So really great feature if you're into fuel economy. 
This is our off-road mode. Right now you can see we're sitting pretty flat and our steering wheel was straight. Now I've turned it 8 to 11 degrees and I'm in two-wheel drive mode and I'm tipping forward just a little bit and tipping off to the left just a little bit. So really cool feature if you're doing any off-road just so you can see um, what angles you're on both up, down, and side to side. Blank page. If you're looking for a really clean look, you can leave the blank page on. And again, most people really like knowing how fast they're going, both with the analog and the digital side by side. As we move through that top menu, I'm just pressing this arrow button right here. We can take a look at our music, what we're listening to on the radio, navigation directions if available. And then if our phone's connected, we'd have all that information here and settings. Settings is where you're going to go when you want to change from miles to kilometers. If you're traveling across the border, we can also change what option uh, info pages we can see in that previous menu. Uh, so if you didn't want two trip odometers, you could turn one of those off. If um, you didn't care about your air filter life because you're checking that all the time, you can turn that off. Um, timer and engine hours, two things that we don't use very often. However, you know, transmission fluid and trailer brake, if you're towing, those are going to be important. So those are now all going to show back in my information menu. We didn't have those there before. There's our trailer brake gain, transmission fluid, temperature, engine hours, and the timer. You want to start that timer, just click down and start timer. So we'll see how long that runs for in this truck. So there's a quick rundown of your driver area. Uh, next we'll move on over to the uh, center console and I'll finish up with the radio. Open up the uh, glove box inside. You've got the SD card, which is for your navigation system. The auxiliary, if you want to listen to an old iPod or something like that. And then you have your USB and USB-C connectors. Uh, so lots of connections inside this vehicle. Also a nice little light right there. So it'll light up that glove box at nighttime. On the side, there's these little ridges. Uh, great for storing file folders if you wanted to keep some files with some documents in there. A couple of big cup holders, one on either side. Place to put your phone, unless, of course, you want to use the wireless charger, which is right here. These upgraded wireless chargers are awesome. Uh, the first generation were very slow, and to be honest, by the time they came out, most of the phones were too big. You couldn't actually put your phone in there. Now, you can put just about any phone in there with just about any case, and it will charge. You can know that your phone is charging if you look up at the phone light here and that uh, has a little lightning bolt on it. If it stays illuminated for more than 30 seconds, your phone is charging. Apologize for a little bit of the glare, but hopefully we get uh, a good look here. We've got our trailer brake control. So you've got your gains down at the bottom, and then if you need a little extra gain, you can use that. We've got a traditional um, outlet, if you were, had you know a cigarette lighter or charging up an older cell phone. And of course your 110 uh, or I think 115 volt power outlet. Great for uh, charging your laptop or doing anything that you need to do. Most things that you can use around the house, you'll be able to use in the truck as long as you're not pulling too much power. Just above that, we've got uh, our parking sensors. We can turn those off. For example, if you had a bike rack on the back, you might want to uh, turn the parking sensors off so every time you back up, you don't get that beep. Auto stop feature that is on just about every vehicle in the market now when the vehicle meets all of the right conditions and you come to a complete stop the engine will turn off when you come to a complete stop when you lift your foot up off the brake your uh, engine will restart and you're ready to go beside that is your power release for your tailgate just keep in mind you want to make sure that there's nothing behind you when you're using that power release four-way flashers traction control which in a pickup, you're not likely going to turn off very often. But if you ever did need to rock yourself back and forth and get yourself out of the hole or divot, you're going to want to turn off that traction control. Power to the outlet we have up here and your hill descent control. If you're traveling off-road on some pretty rough terrain uh, and going in some steep declines, you'll want to use that hill descent control. Above that, we've got our heated seats. We've also got ventilated seats in this model, so keep yourself nice and cool. And above that is our climate control system. So fully automatic, two different temperatures for driver and passenger. Once you get the temperature set to where you want to go, click auto. 
and it will automatically speed up or slow down the fan speed and direct where the air needs to go. Now you notice it's pretty hot out today. It's trying to get down to those temperatures, so it kicked up real fast. I'm just going to turn that closer to the actual temperature, and you'll notice it'll calm itself down and get a little bit quieter. So when I'm using my uh, electronic climate control, generally I like to keep the temperatures uh, pretty close to the outside temperature so that slowly go down degree by degree and I don't get a whole lot of fan speed blowing around and it makes me feel nice and comfortable inside the vehicle. Above that is our radio and I'm going to shoot a second video on the radio because there's lots of information in there. Above that you can see here we've got our OnStar. Make sure you connect your OnStar. You get 10 years of complimentary coverage. All you got to do is push that blue OnStar button. Uh, over here we have our airbag lights. Currently nobody in the passenger seat and the airbag is off. Interior light switches. Our power rear slider. So that opens and closes using that. And that uh, back window also has a rear defogger on it, which is great to have that combination. And then our sunroof here. Tilt to open. And then we've got our slide to slide it all the way back. Nice and bright. Interior lights, driver map light, passenger map light, and your garage door opener. If you want to program your garage door opener, uh, fairly easy to program. What you want to do is make sure that you got the remote handy and hold the remote up close. Push and hold the remote button you want to program on your remote and push and hold the button that you want to program. Once that little LED light flashing there changes the flash pattern, you've got that programmed. Sometimes that's good enough. You'll be able to open up your garage right away. Other times what you're going to want to do is uh, use the learn button on the back of your garage door and uh, that will allow you to program a new remote. If you stuck with me, we've been uh, talking for about 15 minutes or so. Thank you so much for checking out this Sierra AT4. If you have any questions, uh, send me a message, post a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks from all of us at Finn Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC.